The TBI says Hamilton County deputies found the body of 42-year-old Shandell Riley at a home on a log cabin lane in Saudi Daisy. In 2019, Riley made headlines when she sued deputies Daniel Wilkie and Jacob Goforth. Riley claimed Wilkie baptized her in Saudi Lake while Goforth videotaped uh, after a traffic stop. Eric Benninghoff joins us now to explain what happens next in this lawsuit following the woman's death. Eric. Latricia, Josh, we still don't know how Shandell Riley died, just that the TBI is waiting on an autopsy to determine what happened. But there are still some questions left unanswered tonight. An unusual case we first learned about in 2019 that court documents show unfolded here at Saudi Lake. I think the history of it in the media will show that a baptism uh, by a police officer um, in the line of duty in exchange for leniency in a criminal case is beyond the pale. And now the TBI says the woman at the center of the lawsuit, Shandell Riley, has been found dead at a residence here on Log Cabin Lane in Saudi Daisy. All I can tell you is that I learned late last night or late yesterday afternoon that she had apparently been found deceased. Riley is one of several people suing Hamilton County Deputy Daniel Wilkie. She claimed he stripped down to his underwear and baptized her in Saudi Lake after a traffic stop, offering a citation instead of an arrest if she agreed. It's an ongoing lawsuit that's seen many delays due to the pandemic and other factors. And with Riley's death comes another hurdle. It could impact it negatively to the point where we would have nobody to continue to prosecute it. But her attorney, Robin Flores, says the case can still move forward. Her deposition's already been done. Her testimony is preserved. Flores says a key factor will be whether Riley's two surviving children want to take on the case. They would fill her shoes, in essence. It's an ongoing case with more questions than answers about what happened at this lake and now down this road. Almost a year later, a bill targeting those experiencing homelessness will once again be brought to the Senate floor tomorrow. Brianna It's Your shows us the concerns local advocates for our homeless community have about the legislation. Brianna. Josh, Kim, those I spoke to are worried this could take the focus away from the bigger issue at hand, which they say is the lack of affordable housing in Chattanooga. A bill that failed in the Senate Judiciary Committee last April was recommended for passage last week and placed on Wednesday's Senate calendar. This, um, as amended, simply expands the Equal Access to Public Property Act of 2012 to apply the offense of unauthorized camping to all public properties. The current act only applies to state-owned property, and when Senator Paul Bailey introduced his bill last year, he explained it would give local governments the same rights as the state to penalize unauthorized individuals from camping, which could result in a Class E felony. Somewhat of an issue that, that your locals may be facing here in the future, and they may be um, wanting to know if they have the ability to, um, to make sure that the public remains safe as well as those that are homeless. The bill would also make it a Class C misdemeanor for someone to solicit or camp on or near highways or under bridges and overpasses. Wendy Winters from the Chattanooga Regional Homeless Coalition says these punishments could be particularly harmful to people experiencing homelessness. If someone is um, convicted of a felony because of homelessness, I mean, that you know, that could potentially ruin someone's life. Sam Wolf is the director of Homeless and Supportive Housing in Chattanooga and says the need for affordable housing is crucial, especially since there aren't enough private properties that provide space for the homeless. If every single person in, in experiencing homelessness in our community showed up to shelters and said, yes, please give me a place to, to sleep, the reality is there's not enough spaces for them, right? I think that really underscores the importance for us to act sooner rather than later to create those options for folks. He says this has been a known need even before this bill. If it doesn't take an ordinance going through the Senate for anyone to look in our community and see that the problem of homelessness is far greater than it ever has been. The city says they have two months to relocate residents from an 11th Street camp. Now, here is the site of a proposed city sanctioned encampment. You can see some of the progress being made. These lines markate the spaces where residents can go ahead and set up their tents. Now, this is going to be one option for residents who are going to have to soon need a new place to live from that 11th Street location. Two months to relocate residents from these 11th Street camps. There's been a variety of, of issues on those properties, really kind of culminating with, with some safety concerns in the last couple weeks. 
Located right beside an active railroad, the city says it's become a danger. I just know trains come through all the time. I mean, every few minutes there's trains coming through. Velvet Fitzsimmons lives in her car, blocks away from the 11th Street camp and right across from this soon to be city sanctioned encampment. And we've been wondering what that was for. The camp isn't up and running yet, but it's soon to be an option for homeless residents who will need somewhere new to stay. Norfolk Southern has granted the city two months to help relocate the 150 people that sleep here, some in tents and some without any shelter at all. Our sanctioned encampment location is going to be an optional place for people if they would like to go stay there while they're working to get into housing. The encampment will have portable toilets, fencing for privacy and on-site security. It's a very dangerous place out here after five o'clock and some security would be very wonderful. Mayor Tim Kelly announced a $100 million initiative so more families can have a place to call home. Sabrina Majore is live with what this means for you. Sabrina. This investment will mean more affordable units for middle and working class families, and it's also meant to make a difference for the hundreds of Chattanoogans experiencing homelessness. For the last two years, Valerie Atkinson has called this gray minivan home. She used to want to be able to drive and continue to pay for insurance. A choice that means Atkinson is homeless, spending much of her time waiting to get into an affordable unit. That way she'll put less than 30% of her income towards her housing. And, and then I couldn't afford like the down payments on some. It just seemed like it was all the timing was off. This new initiative from the city means speeding up that waiting period. We'll be able to make this historic investment in affordable housing without raising taxes. $100 million over the next five years to address an affordable housing gap that the city has said reached a crucial inflection point as costs for apartments have gone up while available units have remained sparse. HUD, as it's widely known, uh, reimburses, I want to say $670 for a one-bedroom apartment, where uh, average rents now for a one-bedroom in Chattanooga are about eleven dollars or $1,200. There's no question but that this is directly related to, to our homeless. Wendy Winters with Chattanooga's Regional Homeless Coalition says the number of people experiencing homelessness rose 80% last year and is on track to increase again despite federal relief. We had hoped to eliminate homelessness for at least some subpopulations with the, that record amount of funding that we received. However, it was very difficult to find units in which to use those resources. Now, hope the city's investment can make a difference. I'm ready to get stabilized somewhere or to move on down the road. As Atkinson searches for a permanent place to call home. Now, this funding is meant to address an estimated housing gap of 5,000 homes in our area. The city says they'll prioritize those who are experiencing homelessness. But again, it will also help the middle and working class families who have struggled to make ends meet. 